There are some things that are objectively terrible decisions to repeat every day, like checking your crypto holdings, but there's a lot of value in something that you do every single day. Now, practicing every single day is kind of like a really tough habit for a lot of people to get into, but the challenge here is to do just this one exercise every day for seven days, and I promise you it will, you'll get better, you'll get noticeably, noticeably better just by doing this, okay? So I'm gonna do it real slow, and then we're gonna talk about how it's actually a lot easier than it sounds and why it's gonna help you out. So basically what you're gonna do is gonna sound like this. Okay, so that wasn't that slow, but I wanted to do it first just so you kind of have an idea of what you're getting into, but this helps so much. I did a video series a few months ago about like learning how to shred or trying to learn how to shred in 30 days. And one of the biggest eye openers for me was a video I made about three notes per string, okay? Now, this is gonna be a little bit of a three notes per string exercise, but there's, there's so much value in it and I think it's really easy to remember, okay? So I'm just playing the B and the E strings on top doing this, and I'm alternate picking everything. You don't have, you can use your fingers if you wanna do it. But it's a really simple pattern that we're gonna do forward and backward, and like I said, do it for seven days, even if you just do it for five minutes a day for seven days. I, I would recommend doing a little bit longer, and I think actually if you get into it, you're gonna to wanna to do it longer, just because it's kinda of cathartic to do. But this is it. The way to remember these notes, because aside from just doing the exercise, remember the notes can be the tricky part, is really simple. You see this shape right here, start on the third fret of the B string, and you go three, five, seven, and then the same thing on the high E string. Now again, this is probably the hardest part because it's a pretty big stretch from your pointer to your pinky, but you don't have to do it like this. It's more about just seeing the notes, three, five, seven, three, five, seven. A note, a whole step, and another whole step, and then repeat that same shape on the high E string. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing, but one fret higher than where we ended. So now instead of seven, we're starting on eight, a whole step, a whole step, and a whole step, whole step interval on both strings. So it's the exact same shape in two different spots, but we're just gonna add a couple of the notes just before and after that, okay? This is in the people's key, the key of G. All right, I'll also link you to that video about how this kind of thinking just changed, changed my entire approach to lead playing and picking in general. So there's a lot of value in this, but remember, just kind of get this down first. And then we're gonna turn it into an exercise that is a little more musical because I think playing them as scale shapes, once you apply them to actual music, it sounds like you're playing scale shapes, not actual music, okay? So keep that in mind for just one second. Maybe just kind of noodle around with it just to try to get that reach. And like I said, if you have to go like pointer, ring, slide, that's fine, doing it too. Just practice that while I tell you how amazing Elixir Strings are. Elixir Strings are the sponsor of this video. If you saw the one a couple days ago with this awesome D'Angelico guitar, I am currently in New York City for just a few days. Uh, D'Angelico let me borrow this guitar, but I'm glad that I brought these strings with me because I have such a hard time not playing Elixir strings. So I restringed this bad boy with Elixirs, even though I'm only gonna use it for a day, and then I'm gonna grace this back to the D'Angelico showroom with fresh Elixir strings. Just really just watch that other video and then watch this video, and you can hear the, the amazing difference. Just, these, these are amazing. So these are the Acoustic NanoWeb 8020-12s. That is my preference. I will link you in the description. Definitely get yourself a pair of Elixir strings because it's gonna help you just be comfortable. It's gonna feel better while you're practicing this every day for a week, maybe beyond, okay? So I said this was the key of G, the people's key, right? So basically that's just G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. You do not have to remember that those are all the notes, but this is gonna help you find those notes in any spot that you're at, okay? Now if you've played just like the chords in the key of G, you'll notice that you know, you see kind of like the usual suspects in that open area. So the B and the E string, open one, three, open two, three. This is the only part of the entire exercise where the B string and the E string, you do not play the same fret, 
okay? So B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Open one, three, open two, three, okay? That's where they, they diverge, and that's just the difference between uh, just starting on different notes in a key, okay? Now, if we mirror this across the octave, we get 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15. So this and this are the same thing, okay? Now, let's get on the exercise that you're gonna do. We're gonna start up here, and we're gonna go through just those six notes, three notes per string that we did, okay? So we're gonna go open one, three, open two, three, but we're gonna add some more notes by reversing our direction. So eventually it's gonna sound like this. Okay, that's gonna be the entire sequence. If we think of these as, I, I think of them as in groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so the first two sets of three are just going the B string notes, and the E string notes. Then we're gonna pivot and go back three notes and forward three notes, okay? So eventually by the end of it, we end up with our highest note in that sequence of six notes. If it helps you, it used to help me thinking of just like all the notes in like a six note scale almost. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, four, five, six. Sometimes that can be confusing if you're thinking of fret numbers and notes too, but basically this is gonna be it. So it's not so much of a brain teaser where everything is out of order. In fact, they're still in the same order, we're just going forward and backwards, which is how uh, a melody would usually work. Most of the time, melodies in music are usually not so far apart interval-wise. Usually maybe it's like the next note forward or the next note back in a scale, right? We're, that doesn't mean those notes have to be right next to each other because we see all these whole steps. But I think that this is gonna really help with your lead playing, so on and so forth. And then after we do that, we're gonna go one note forward, one position forward into all the stuff that we've already known, okay? So bear with me, we've got that first one where it's Open one, three, E, two, three, two, open, three, B, open. And then once we get to that last note, we're gonna start on the next note in the key, which is here. And do the exact same sequence. Okay, and again, I'm doing it alternate picking. I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But either way, that same sequence going forward six notes, back three and forward three, I think is just the way to do it, okay? So we're gonna go through all those advancing one note per string forward. And again, remember, the way to think of it is just to kind of double up the third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret, 10th fret, 12th fret. But as you're gonna see right now, it'll kind of come up with different fingerings that'll be more uh, conducive to your playing, okay? So super slow, we'll start at the first position again. Open, one, three, open, two, three, backwards. And then we're gonna go to the next note. And see how they're pretty much the same except for that second first fret? Then the next note, three, five, seven. It's gonna be exactly the same on the high E string. But then when I get back to the B string, I pivot. Then I'm gonna go to the next shape. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven, eight. So again, this scale, this, this position right here, you'll notice that sometimes I'm using actually like my pointer middle ring. That was definitely hard for me to do at first. I was more accustomed to using my pointer, ring finger, or ring finger and, and pinky right there. But again, whatever is comfortable for you, it's not about, you know, it, it's about learning the notes, getting the picking right, whether you're doing with your fingers or with a pick, and then just kind of like learning the sequence and doing it in whatever speed is comfortable for you with whichever fingers are easy for you to, to stretch. Again, if you have to, you're just gonna get this innate understanding of where the intervals are on a guitar and going through the fretboard, all right? So now this one, 
we have a whole step and a half step. That half step is coming from where these two meet, right? That seventh fret and uh, eighth fret is where the whole step symmetrical intervals kind of like converge, I guess. So again, let's take it back from the fifth fret. And then we're gonna go seven, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10, eight, seven, 10, seven, eight, 10. Then we're gonna go one forward to that symmetrical shape where they're just whole steps. And then we're gonna go down one more and here's where they diverge again, just like uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> they're most they're, they're mostly neck and neck, but every now and then you get that little that little separation where that where that flat seven comes in. I'm looking at you, Bitcoin. <laughs> okay, and remember, mirror that over. It's the same thing here. So again, after we go from here, the symmetrical one. 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 14, 12, 10, 13, 10, 12, 14. Now we're at the octave. So it's that first thing we did, 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15, 14, 12, 15, 12, 14, 15. And then I end it with a G chord, which is again just the 15th fret, 12, 12, 12. Okay, so we're gonna do the whole thing all the way forward. Then we're gonna do the whole thing backwards. Like I said, just do this every day for a week. And I think you're gonna be shocked at how well this gets into your fingers. There's something about these symmetrical shapes and just kind of like doing them slow and steady at a, at a clear pace. Use a metronome if you want. Uh, when I'm first learning something, I like doing it actually without a metronome, even though that's not like technically the best way to do it. But I like getting it under my fingers first and then adding the metronome. Because if it's a new pattern for me, I just, uh, I, I'll, I'm gonna get off that click anyway. But uh, it is a great way to learn how much better you're getting because it's hard to see that incremental improvement over time, right? So from the top. Then the next shape. Then we're shifting again into that symmetrical one. Now that minor scale looking shape. Then the other totally symmetrical one. Now we're going past that octave to get that C on the B string. Now we're do the same thing backwards, okay? So, really easy, we're just it's gonna sound like this. So I'm gonna explain the picking real quick and then we're just gonna do it again backwards. Forward and backwards, that's the name of the game, right? So we're starting on the high G right here. And we go 15, 14, 13, 15, B string, 13, 12. Then I'm going back up, then back down. Right, remember I'm pivoting going up three strings and then back three strings to end up the lowest point in each one, okay? I can't stress importantly enough how you really wanna be able to do it forward and backwards. Even though it's always easier to do it forward, doing it backwards is, is much, much more beneficial, actually, because you are kind of like challenging your brain in a different way, right? So let's do it backwards. Start on the high G. Then shift. Now we're back in that symmetrical spot. Then they're just separated by one fret on top. Now we're going backwards through the minor scale shape. Another symmetrical shape. Here we go to that F sharp again. And then end on G, okay? So, 
it's kind of it's kind of tricky at first, totally. But I really think there's there's just, I can't stress how much value there is. I just keep saying it over and over again. It's like I shouldn't have to convince you of that, nor should I have to convince you to get Elixir strings because they're just the best strings that money can buy, and they last forever, and they feel better, and they sound better. It's just something that you should be doing anyways. But I more, more than that, more than it just being even this specific thing, really just try to challenge yourself by picking up your guitar every day and just going through the exercise, right? I think it's a little unrealistic for a lot of people to make time in their schedule to practice guitar every single day, right? But that's how you build good habits, just by taking little challenges and maybe just, all right, for one week, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just make my way all through this, forward and backwards, even if it's just one time, at the slowest possible rate that you try to keep steady into the next one, slide if you have to. If you're just navigating, you don't even have to use the same fingers, right? But I think just making time to do it every single day is a great way to energize your playing because I know like a lot of us kind of get stuck like, oh, I'm not getting any better, I feel like I've plateaued. But a lot of it maybe it's just because you haven't found a good, a good rhythm, a good groove into it. So forcing yourself to do something for a week even if it's only five days, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna give you any shade if you only get five days through it. I think is a fantastic way to maybe start building a little bit of, a little bit of just consistency into what you're doing, yeah? So do it for a week. Let me know how it goes in the comments, please. I would love to hear what you guys think and how it's helped you because I, I really think that like, any time that I sit down and just like jam with people, I, I'm so much better now than I was even like a year ago, especially when it comes to like lead playing. You know, I've been like, you know, a professional rhythm guitar player for a while, but my lead playing has gotten a lot better in the last year. And I definitely think like doing that three notes per string shred month that I did where I practiced every single day for like at least an hour really is the main reason that I've gotten that much better at it. So try it every day just for a few minutes. I think you'll actually find out how how enjoyable it is, and then get yourself some Elixir strings and a D'Angelico guitar uh, as a reward for your incredible diligence, <laughs> vigilance, not even sure what word I'm looking for there, uh, just for, you know, doing a great job. So anyways, if you have any questions or comments, like I said, let me know your progress in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot.